I'm imagining what it might be like when we transmit a message to the nearest star to Earth, Proxima Centauri. It's just over four light years away. That means a little over eight years later, we could get a reply back. And we would have a timestamp in it saying, send us a reply on this date and this time. So we'll have our telescopes pointing. If a signal comes in then, it will be my God. There is life everywhere. If the nearest star has intelligent life, then the entire galaxy is populated. And it's not just we are not alone, but we're, we're part of this, this whole, I guess I would be speechless. My name is Doug Vakoch. I'm president of METI, an organization dedicated to messaging extraterrestrial intelligence. You know, uh, when I was a kid uh, in my teens, I uh, heard about uh, SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And the thing that really crystallized it was I did a science fair project uh, where I designed messages to uh, life on other planets. So I was very interested as a teenager in science. I wanted to understand more about the world around me. Uh, but the problem was I, I liked all the sciences. So I like biology, I like geology, I like chemistry, physics, astronomy. The nice thing about searching for life beyond Earth is you need all of the sciences. So uh, in those days, it was called exobiology. I knew that when I grew up, I wanted to be an exobiologist. And you know, in the early days, I was hooked because it was, this was a great way to understand everything about the world out there. And the thing that keeps me coming back to it is that you know, as I moved from my teens into my 20s and my 30s, I realized um, the world's a lot more than the stuff that's out there. It's the stuff that's in here too. I thought I would go on and become a, a physicist or a biologist. I ended up becoming a psychologist. I, I realized I, I like understanding people more than stars. But when you're searching for intelligence out there, you need to know a little about both of them. When SETI started out in the 1960s, everyone was looking for radio signals. At METI, we're taking the next step and looking at the possible motivations of aliens who aren't sending us signals, but who may be waiting for getting a message of their own. It's, it is virtually inconceivable to me that there isn't intelligence somewhere in the universe. And to me, it's just numbers. I mean, there are over a hundred billion stars in our galaxy alone. And we know that stars have at least one planet on average. Maybe one out of five of those star systems has a potentially habitable Earth-like planet. So billions of planets that could be inhabited in our galaxy, and then billions of other galaxies. So I, I don't believe in miracles. And so it would really be a miracle if out of all of those stars, ours was the only one that had planets that bear life and that becomes intelligent. When we look for targets for our METI transmissions, we're looking for stars that have planets that could support life. And the good news is uh, virtually all stars have planets around them. And what we're interested in is not just any old planet that goes around a star, but a planet that is at just the right distance that it could support liquid water. It's called the Goldilocks zone, where it's not too hot and not too cold, but just right to support liquid water. So, you know, when we look at an, an interesting target for us called uh, TRAPPIST-1, we see that there are seven planets, roughly Earth-sized, and three of them are in the habitable zone. So there are some that are closer in where it's going to be too hot, water's going to boil away. Some of the ones that are very far out are going to just be frozen. There's not going to be any way that it could support life. But in that intermediate zone, the Goldilocks zone, that's where there could be habitable planets. So 
So when I was a kid and I wanted to find aliens, I thought, oh, how cool might they be? How different could they be from us? And now, yes, I want to know about life on other planets, but I'm actually much more interested about what we learn about ourselves in the process of searching. Uh, because right now we have only one civilization that we know of that can create the kind of technology that can reach out into space. But if we come to know that there is someone else, now we're going to have the ultimate mirror to look at ourselves in, in another civilization, and to see whether these things that we think are so central to ourselves and our humanity are very common characteristics or, or whether they're very unique. But I think the good news is, the more we come to learn about those other civilizations, the more we're going to recognize they may be wiser than we are, they may be more powerful. They're never gonna be more human though. So we've got the lock on being human. When we send radio signals to TRAPPIST-1, our message will focus directly on habitability, specifically the ways that we are threatening the habitability of our own world, Earth. We'll use an incredibly powerful transmitter at the Goonley Earth Station, located in southern England. This is a transmitter that's typically reserved for communicating with distant spacecraft orbiting Mars. This time, though, in connection with the Electronic Music Festival Stahia, we'll point the same transmitter at TRAPPIST-1. When I look at TRAPPIST-1 and imagine 40 years from now they get our message and then send a reply, um, it's kind of poignant to imagine it because in all likelihood I will be dead. Um, I would have to be 140 years old. I mean, if there is a new technology that would let me live that long, that would be a game changer. I imagine death is just the end of things for me. Uh, and so it's not something I like because I really like the stuff that I'm doing. So it, it seems sad that someday I'm not gonna be around doing these things. Um, I guess from my perspective, I just think I won't exist after death. If the natural process of aging could be reversed if I could be even restored to what I felt like I, when I was 20, that would be fantastic. I'd have even more energy for doing that. Uh, so I would embrace it wholeheartedly, both for uh, just the enjoyment of life, but honestly, I don't expect I'm ever going to retire. I mean, I'm doing what I do because I love it. You know, sometimes people uh, act as if without death, life has no meaning because you know everything is defined by this end point but you know we have chapters in our lives we have um, events that will break our lives apart and give meaning uh, different uh, stages of our life and so right now we may look at death and you know try to justify why it's a good thing by saying you know this gives us meaning in life and it makes us accelerate our activities and do the things that are most important to us maybe we'll be able to do even more important things, we'll be able to take on even greater challenges if we have a confidence that we're going to be around much longer than we are right now. You know, if there is a civilization that is stable enough to have been doing SETI for a million years, it's a bit difficult to conceive of them um, still having such limited life spans as us. I mean, there is still nothing like going out far away from a city where there are no lights and you can look up and it's just stars. But now, you know, I look up there and I say, almost all of those stars are orbited by planets. And then I know something else that I could never have imagined, which is the stars with the planets 
that are closest to us, I can't even see. That that this the, the darkness in between is just chock full of billions of stars with billions of planets that my eyes can't even see. And so to me, um, when we can connect that visceral sense of being here with a rational understanding of how it all works, that's where the connection really comes. This is where you want uh, a half a dozen lifetimes, is to really delve into this and try and understand it, and then start planning, oh my God, this is now a two-way conversation. What do we say next? Um, I mean, this is, this is a pretty exotic environment out here. I would not mind this on an alien planet. Uh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is one hell of a class M planet. We need to get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>